Hi guys, Ruth here back again with some more painting. Now this week's I've been doing a, a an otter, an otter. Um, it's my first otter, never done an otter before. I was especially excited for this painting though because this time I have been using some new paints and I always get really excited when I've got new paints to try out. I know, sad but true. So these ones I picked up from the paint rack at Bargo Village and that's where I've been getting a lot of my paints lately. I used to go to the Games Workshop to pick up my paints, but I found that their paints, they have a different top to them. They dry out quite quickly. Plus, uh, where I'm from in Nuneaton, the Games Workshop shop is usually closed. <laughs> so, yeah, I can never really get my paints from there. But the paint box, paint box? I can never remember the name. The paint box, um, the guy there's great. He knows his stuff and he has got a huge selection of paints. And for me, they're perfect because the paintings that I do, because they're quite small, the paint goes a really long way. So these are going to last me for ages. Now, these are specially designed for using with an airbrush. I don't use an airbrush, but these work perfect for me for doing washes. Now, washes, for those of you who don't do the painting, they're just kind of like a thin layer of paint that go over the top to give a different shade to the whole image. So for me what I would do is I would create the base layer, do sort of like a foundation colour for my image, then I would build it up with doing different light and dark um, just layers, details, and then once I've got the details I could wash over the top of the whole thing just to give it like a unifying colour. What this does too is builds up kind of levels of shade, so because these are slightly uh, translucent, they're not opaque like the normal paints, the thin layers, you can still see the, the painting you've done beneath the surface. So with each layer that you do, you're just building up that depth. Um, it just gives you more realism to your pictures. So if you've done a painting and you like it but you don't think it's great, then what I would say, just like with the needle felting, you basically, if you're not happy, you're not done yet. And the great thing with these is that they don't change it too much, just a little bit. And what you can do is just go over the top with a bit of this, give it a bit of a shade, a little bit of a, a layer there, and then go over a top, uh, the top with your darks and lights. So for me, I like to paint animals, and the main reason I like painting animals is because you get that fur effect, so it's lots of thin strokes of light and dark, and it's nice and easy to do with the, with the layers that you can do with these, the washes. You can really build up that depth. Um, getting a bit carried away here. I will have to do like an episode just on this is how I paint. I'm not sure if anyone would be interested but hey. Um, so yes, the painting that I've done started off like this and ended up like this. Now I really liked him, I enjoyed doing him. He didn't take that long to do and for me it just, I was wondering whether to turn him into a card or not because it doesn't feel as though there's a, enough to it don't know so what I've decided to do is I'm going to be doing another painting of an otter I'm getting quite into otters at the moment I'm going to do a close-up for my next image um, so if you're interested and wanted to have a look at that just click on that subscribe button and that bell icon so that you know when that comes out hope you enjoy the video <laughs> 